I know that I'm not going to be using my riding lawnmower now for at least three or four months. What do I do with the battery during that off season, during those winter months, so I know that when I go to cut my grass for the first time in the spring, that it actually has been taken care of and it actually will start my riding lawnmower again. This is preventive maintenance, guys. I have done a ton of research for all y'all on this one. There is a lot of information to cover here. So I would suggest grab a beer, kick back, and relax. Hey guys and girls, welcome back to Steve Small Landed Saloon again. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for tuning in. I find that this job right here goes a lot smoother if you got a nice smooth Rolf beer in your hand. We're going to go through several points here. I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to start this out as if you don't have a battery charger. There's a lot of you guys out there that don't have a battery charger. You don't want a battery charger. First of all, don't take it out of your riding lawnmower yet if you don't have a battery charger because your lawnmower engine has a built-in battery charger in it, so we might need to use that. First thing we want to do is check the electrolyte level in your battery, the battery acid level. If you have uh, removable caps on the top like this, then we want to pop those off and see how full this battery is of, of the electrolyte, the fluid in there. If you don't have these battery uh, caps on here, it's, maybe it's a maintenance-free battery, then you can just skip this step. But I'm going to show you this right now. And of course, look at this battery right now when I took it out. Clean the top of your battery off. Obviously, when you pull these caps off, you don't want all that crud and stuff falling into your battery. Clean it off as best as you can. And then we want to pop those caps off and have a look inside little flat screwdriver eye protection gloves very necessary on this believe it or not battery acid hurts if you get it in your eye and it burns if you get it on your hands I'm gonna put these mechanics gloves on right now hey on that note you know I got some I'm gonna be using quite a few tools and different products during this video <clears throat> so I got quite a few links in my description to different stuff I'm going to be using. So check back on the description if you want to see some of this stuff I'm using. Everybody should have a box full of these things around. These are indispensable. They're cheap, you guys. Once we got those on right there, flat screwdriver, let's pop that, those caps off right there and have a look inside there. Little flashlight comes in super handy here. So you can look down there. <clears throat> Make sure that the, uh, the uh, electrolyte, the battery acid is covering those plates. Here's one right here. If you see that one right there, I'll try to get my camera in here as good as I can. You can actually see the top of those lead plates. Those lead plates are really thin plates and they're really close together. I can still see the top of those plates. You want to top that up with uh, distilled water so it's just covering those plates you don't want the top of those plates to dry out the reason that people uh, always are saying use distilled water is because distilled water is like is uh, soft water it's like rain water it has no minerals nothing in it it's just pure pure water so we want to top that one up right there so it is just covering those plates so now we know that the fluid level is at the proper level, the battery acid. By the way, battery acid is made up of approximately 75% water and 25% sulfuric acid. That's what's in your battery. Now we can do one of two things. We want to check the charge in this battery right now. You can use a little multimeter like this and uh, check that. We got uh, over 13 volts in this. This is a 12 volt battery. We got 13 volts in that. That is a fully charged battery. 
that's a multimeter. You can also use a hydrometer. You can get these. These things are super inexpensive too. Also, I got one of the, uh, those that you can click on in my description too. Easy to use this one too. You just stick it in there like that and squeeze the bulb. It sucks all that electrolyte up. And then you can just see right there, that is a fully charged battery. That needle right there comes way up to the top, way above the good. That is a really good battery. That's what you want to see right there. If you're using one of these hydrometers, just when you're done with it, just make sure that all the acid is out of there. And uh, sometimes I'll put it in a bucket of water or something like that, just to make sure that there's no acid on there that's going to get on anything. I'm just going to put on a rag right now over there. Now, if your battery is not over 12%, if that thing says it's bad and your multimeter says it's below 12, we need to charge it up. You don't have a charger? Leave it in your uh, riding lawnmower and take your riding lawnmower outside now. Put those caps back on. Take it outside and run your engine. It will charge your battery up. 15, 20 minutes maybe, and then shut your uh, unit off. Go back and check it with one of those again until you know that you, it's over 12 volts, 13 volts, something like that. So now that we know that the fluid level in there is proper and it's charged over 12, 13 volts, something like that, you can pop those covers back on there. And uh, why did we just do that? Why did we just charge that over 12 volts? volts it's because we do not want this thing to freeze if you have a battery that's ever been frozen you're going to see that the sides of the battery are going to be like bubbled out a little bit like that that's not what's hurting your battery if the acid inside of there has frozen we all know that frozen water expands you saw how thin those plates were when i showed you that last close up there very thin soft lead plates if your water freezes in there, your satellite uh, uh, electrolyte freezes in there, it squishes those plates together where they're going to touch each other. Now you have a short in your battery. If that happens, now your battery is screwed. So we cannot let this thing freeze. So how does charging it up, up above 12 volts help with this freezing issue? This is very interesting, you guys. I've double-checked this and triple-checked this fact right here electrolyte battery acid if it is charged up in your battery over 12 volts it will not freeze until minus 76 degrees Fahrenheit that's minus 60 degrees Celsius that is freaking cold you guys as soon as the uh, fluid in the bat in that battery drops um, below 12 volts, like say you got 11 and a half volts in there, now it's considered severely discharged and that will freeze just like water does. Zero degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Now the battery is fully charged, you know the fluid level's proper, the battery is, is where it should be now. Now we can disconnect the battery. We want to disconnect it, uh, take the negative cable off first then the positive cable now you got them loose you got your terminals you got your cable sitting there we want to clean those terminals I use a little bit of emery cloth or sandpaper something like that <clears throat> we want to just take those terminals like that and just get all that corrosion off of there as good as possible Shine them up so you see silver through those. Do the best you can. And then also on the cables that are, that are on your lawnmower, um, also do the same thing with those. You can use a wire brush. You can use all kinds of different things to clean them. But the point is, get all that corrosion off there. Shine them up really good. Once those are clean, little di dielectric grease. This is what's recommended for all electrical connections, including especially including um, uh, battery, battery cables and battery terminals when you're putting those back together. If you wipe all that down with some of this dielectric grease, it's going to prevent that corrosion from, it's going to hinder that corrosion from coming back 
Um, it's not going to stop it, but it will definitely prolong that from coming back. And it uh, provides a good connection between the cable and the terminal. We want to put that on now. Just wipe, just squirt a little bit on your finger like that and wipe it all over that terminal and on your battery cables also. Now you just did all of that. Can you just leave your riding a lawnmower just like that? Not really. It depends on how cold it is where you're storing the mower. We all have heard that concrete myth. There's a lot of you guys out there are going to go, you never put a battery on concrete because the concrete will just magically suck the voltage right out of your battery. It has nothing to do with concrete. It has to do with concrete cold. If you put your hand on top of the battery and it's nice and room temperature, and then you put your hand on the concrete that it's sitting on, and that concrete is freezing cold. This is an important point. The colder your battery is, the faster it will discharge itself. Some guys out there actually say that a battery will, if it's cold, will discharge at about one volt a month. I don't really see how somebody can say that because it depends on how cold it is and how good of a shape your battery's in in the first place. But it's definitely true that the colder your battery is, it discharges itself. So if you're going to place it on concrete, uh, just put something underneath of it. Put a couple pieces of cardboard underneath of it, raise it up off the concrete a bit so it doesn't start getting as cold as it will if it was on freezing cold concrete. If you don't have a battery charger or a battery tender like that to, keep, to actually maintain your battery, then take your battery out of your lawnmower now and put it somewhere to store the battery itself to where you know that the water won't even freeze in that area right there and it should be good. Now, here is the easiest solution right here to maintaining your battery through the winter. Uh, peace of mind, easy battery tender. If you guys don't have a battery tender, I got a link on my description. These things are not expensive. You simply do everything that I already showed you right down to checking the fluid level and everything and cleaning, dielectric grease, all that stuff but then hook a battery tender up to your battery and leave it plugged in all winter long. Your battery will never drop below 12 volts. You can be at minus 76 Fahrenheit. What was that? Minus 60 Celsius. If you have a battery tender on that thing, it'll never drop below 12 volts and it'll never freeze on you even in really bad conditions. Well, I hope that was clear enough and informative enough for you guys. Um, if I did miss something, I really tried hard not to miss something on this one. Uh, put some comments down if I did. And uh, make sure you hit that like button, guys. I really hope you liked it. I tried hard on this one. And uh, subscribe to my channel if you already haven't. You guys, there's a lot of people out there that need to know this information. Share this video with your friends. That would be great, too. What can I say? Working hard again on the next video. And uh, that's it. Steve out.